I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 325, where I'm going to show you how to take a weekly forecast and allocate it to months where the week has more than one month. I have here a model that I think demonstrates this very beautifully. I have here, say, a forecast, and it's by week. And you can see that on 12-29 of 2019, it runs from that week or that date all the way through 1-4 of 2020. And let's say I have a forecast of $100,000. Well, I can see that this actually spends time in December as well as it spends time in January. And whatever percent of time is spent in December, I want that percentage of the 100000 to be allocated to December. And whatever percent time that is spent there in January, I want it to be allocated to January. And I would like to see that down here in my by month year matrix down here, what my forecasted values are. So again, I would expect to see this 100000 being broken across these two months of 12, 2019, and 1 of 2019. How can I do this in Quantrix Modeler? Well, I think there's at least two ways that you could do this, and I'm going to show you the way that I would do it, and I would do it using the sum product function. But before we get there, there needs to be a little bit more preparation in the fact that I have a date table. It has a list of all the dates. It has the calendar week uh, of the year that it's in, as well as the year, the calendar year that it's in. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created uh, some helper columns uh, that go ahead and combine my week, my month, and my year. I've also got one that combines my month and year. And then I have one that takes the start date of the week and also the end date of the week. So this week dates can correspond to this category of week dates here. And this month year, which is located here, can, can correlate to the month year that is down in this matrix. But what I want to do now is where I have years going across, or where I have maybe one month in one, where I have a week that is in one month versus another month, I, I need to go ahead and I need to figure out, well, how many days are in uh, one month versus the other month, okay? So, for example, here I am. I have this week. It's 1229 of 2019. It goes all the way through 1-4 of 2020. And I want to say, well, these first three days or, yeah, these first three days are actually part of uh, 12 of 2019, the following four days are actually part of one of 2020. So I want to break out those days. I want to see three days here, and I want to see four days here. So the way I do this first off is I'm simply going to do a count select. And what I want to have my criteria be based upon is really upon my week, month, year helper right here this column. So again, how am I going to do this? I'm going to say select. I'm going to put a count uh, in front of this. And I'm going to say select. What do I want to select? Uh, my week month helper uh, across all rows. And my key list is going to be this across all rows. And what am I looking up this value here? So I'm just getting a, a basic count. So you can see that <clears throat> because these three dates are in different weeks of the calendar year, they are showing with threes. And because these, although part of the same week, are showing in a different week, month, year, then they go ahead and they count up as four, as you can see here. Now what I want to do is I want to take the percentage of how many days of seven is three. And so I simply go out here and say percentage is equal to the days in the week divided by 7. 
Excellent. So I can see that 43% of whatever is in this week should go to uh, December and 57% should go to January of 2020. Fair enough. So if I'm going to use a sum product function though, I really want to only isolate those days that I don't want to have this percentage show up for each one of these days. I want to actually isolate uh, and only show the first instance of this occurrence of this 43%. And maybe I'll show you the problem I run into when I, when I uh, don't just take the first number. So let me show you that. So what I would do now to get maybe the percentage breakout to show up across my two months right here, and I'll go ahead and highlight these because that's kind of what we're after. I would simply go out and use the sum product function, and I would say that my forecast is equal to, and let me see if I can't just make this a little bit taller. My forecast is equal to sum product, and I want to take my forecast here, okay? And I want to multiply it by my percentage over here. Pretty simple. And I want to link this by taking my week dates here in my date ref, that item, as this category here of week dates, and also by taking this month year helper as my category of month here, year here. And when I do that, you can see I get a very large number. I don't get actually what I would expect because what I would expect, frankly, because I have an even number here of $100,000, I would expect to see 43,000 in one month and I would expect to see the other 57,000 in another month. So again, if I were to take this away and say I were to make it $100, again, I'm not seeing the allocation of 43 and 57 as I would expect to see it. And the reason why I'm not seeing that is because I, I'm doubling up my values. And how I'm doubling up my values is I have a range of 31 items here and I have a range of 31 items here. And I'm actually applying this $100 across all of these percentages. And because I'm doing that, it's taking 43 plus 43 plus 43, which gives me 129. So I don't wanna be taking these percentages in duplicate. I only want to take the first occurrence of them. So how do I go ahead and isolate them? Well, I would go ahead and add another column here and I would simply go out and add another formula and call it percent use is equal to if the count uh, of my select week, month, year helper across all rows is equal to this, sorry. Let me explain this one better. In order to isolate the first instance of these, I need to do a count from top to the row that I'm on. And if I do a count from the top to the row that I'm on, I will be able to identify the first one in my list. So in order for that to happen, I'm going to go out here and do a count a, uh, and I'm gonna do this in parts. I'm going to say percent use is equal to count a, uh, and I'm going to say select uh, week, month, year helper, uh, all rows. I want to go from the first one to the week, month, year helper, all rows to this one that I'm on, okay? So I'm taking it from top to the row that I'm on. That's what I'm doing here with this recursion. And then what do I want to look up? Well, I want to look up the same array, which is week, month, year helper, all rows from the first to the week, month, year helper, all rows uh, to this. And the value that I wanna look up is the week, month, year helper. 
And when I do that with my count uh, uh don't don't mind the the don't mind the percentage here, but you can see if I were to format this as a a number, you could see that this is the first instance here, this is the first instance instance here. So I want to isolate those first instances. I want them to bring back the percentage. So where I say that it's equal to one, so I'm going to say if this right here, and I have all that count, uh, if that's equal to one, then I want to bring back my percentage. Otherwise, I want to bring back nothing. So now I have the percentages showing up where I would expect to see them to show up right here and right here. If I were to look at one of these 100% jobbies, I would expect to see it on the first instance of that week, and indeed I do. So now if I have that and I go down here to my sum product, instead of taking my percentage here, I take my percentage use, which is up here. Now you can see that I have the $100 being perfectly allocated of 43 and 57 like that. If I were to make this $100 down here, Again, I would still expect this to be 43 because 43% of that is happening in December of 2019 and the other 57% is happening in 2020 of January. And then 100% of this uh, week is also in January of 2020. So the entire $100 would show there. So that's how I would uh, solve this problem of having a weekly forecast that I have to allocate to months where the week has uh, two months within it. I know that was a little long, but I think that's uh, pretty sweet. You can do that with a sum product function in Quantrix. If you have any questions about Quantrix, I really do hope that you'll reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com and ask me those questions because it makes my day when I hear from the Quantrix community. I really, really love Quantrix. It makes my day every day I get to use it. I really love to hear from you, and I want to make you a Quantrix master, so please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.